Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So tonight we're going to be talking about my five go-to bourbons for fall. Now these are the things that I drink when I'm not filming, when I'm not doing reviews, when I'm not doing anything special for the channel. These are just when I want to drink. These are the things that I tend to gravitate to. Now I tend to do these every season and they kind of change. Some, some, some fall out of favor, some stay. First off, I want to go through and talk about the ones that I had in summer and what happened. Do I still drink them or not? So first one from summer is this Wild Turkey Rare Breed. It's a standard go-to. Everybody raves about Wild Turkey Rare Breed. This one's coming in at 116 proof. Really, really good. It's a fantastic bottle for the money. Highly, highly recommend them. I don't know if it's gonna stick around or not. We'll see here in a minute. The next one that I had in my summer list was Smoke Wagon Uncut and Unfiltered. Now, this is a fantastic, fantastic bourbon. This is batch number 63. Really, really nice bottle, really nice sipper. Uh, really enjoy them, especially if you like something up in the, the mid 110s range for proof. I, I highly recommend them. So uh, very, very nice one that I was sipping on over the summer. Then next up we had from summer, we had a Knob Creek cast strength. This is a 124 proof beast. It was fantastic, still is fantastic, but uh, I'm not so sure I've done a whole lot of damage on it lately. So we'll see if it sticks in the list or not. And the fourth one from summer is Baker's 7. I really, really like this Jim Beam product. Comes in at 107 proof. Usually aged for about seven years. This particular one was aged eight years and eight months. So very, very solid buy on these. And last up, my number five bottle right here. This bottle of uh, barrel craft spirit single barrel it was really really good it's gone now i finished it and it went away so clearly that one's not sticking around anymore uh it was i you know it was one of those that i was just trying to kill and, and i started to learn to like it a lot and i'm not a huge barrel craft spirits person just because the the cost for most bottles is relatively high i think for what you get however that was a it was an exceptional product i flavor wise i'd already bought it so i couldn't complain about the price and it was really, really good. So, uh, but that one's gone. So we know that one's not hanging around. Of these four that we have left, which one stuck around? Well, let's go ahead and say that the Baker's 107 didn't stick around. That one's gone. And I'll say that the Knob Creek isn't sticking around. And the biggest reason for the Knob Creek sticking around, not sticking around, is because there's other similar products to this that when I go to drink, this one, I tend to go to some other ones. And they aren't actually necessarily on the list because they're more rare and it's spread out amongst other 12 year bourbons. If that gives you some hints, I'm not sure that there's like a straight one-to-one -one replacement for this one. Anyway, this one's going away. Smoke wagon uncut unfiltered in the, in a recent store haul I did, I talked about the uh, killing off a, uh, a smoke wagon uncut and filtered. And, and so this one uh, is the only one I have left. And frankly, it's not had a lot of damage done to it. And it's just not something I've been drinking a lot lately. So it's, it's not sticking around either. Last up, this wild turkey rare breed. This one, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a classic, classic. Everybody loves wild turkey rare breed, or at least most people do, and it's highly recommended in the bourbon community. And it, it, it's for good reason. It's a fantastic, fantastic bottle. The bad news is that I haven't been drinking it either, so it's it's going away too. But with all that said, all five of my summer bottles are gone. They are not things that I drink right now. So what have I been drinking? Well, let me show you. Now, what are the criteria for this? Well. First of all, it has to be things that I drink. Normally when I'm filming for YouTube a couple times a week or I'm getting samples from people, I'll try samples, I'll prep for videos, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not necessarily drinking what I want to drink. I'm definitely filming what I want to film and talking about the stuff that I want to talk about. But it, it, you know, it's kind of like research for the channel. So it's, those aren't necessarily things that I go to to drink. What I'm talking about are things that when there's nobody around, I don't have something to do, and I just want to sip on a nice whiskey or a nice bourbon, these are the things that I happen to go to. Well, to be upfront with you guys, I've, I'm starting to find that one of the things that's influencing what my kind of my go-tos are is I'm trying to knock out bottles. I'm trying to you know, take open bottles that I have and kill them because I've got a lot of open stuff and I try to focus on the things that are open and not an open new ones. Normally I don't go to like a really expensive, super rare bottle, like a, a you know, a Wild Turkey Master's Keep bottle or a Michter's 10, some variation of special Michter's product. So it's something that if if I am gonna kill it, I, I hope that I'll be able to replace it at some time in the future. So that those are kind of the criteria that I look for when I'm talking about the five my five go-to bourbons right now. Now, the first one of these, is a Maker's Mark. This one is a Maker's Mark 109 proof 
It's a it's a stave uh, pro profile selection from South Carolina, and this was picked for the list not necessarily because I I've been going to this one necessarily, but it, I have been. I've you know I've actually worked through quite a bit of this over the last couple of weeks. But before this bottle, I was working on a Maker's 46 cast strength, and before that, I was working on a Maker's uh, store pick from Virginia that was 111 proof. So I, I'm putting on that on this list of my go-to's right now are you know, cast strength, higher proof Maker's products. And this just happens to be the one that I'm working on now. And it's a Maker's Mark Private Select. The Maker's Mark stave profiles are really, really interesting to me to be able to kind of spin out new flavors based on, you know, putting the staves into the barrels and to help finish them. So it, it's pretty interesting to me. And they do tend to, especially the Maker's over 100 proof Maker's stuff tends to be pretty, pretty good. It's not necessarily always worth the price. I know like here in Virginia, some of the, the Virginia ABC picks of makers can get quite expensive right now they're running in the 70s i'm not sure they're really worth 70 i think that you know a wild turkey rare breed for example at 45 is a better bourbon at a better price than the makers but i am trying to make space on the shelf and i've got a lot of makers and it's a good place for me to start condensing the makers down into a, a smaller uh, you know profile on the shelves and make room for other bottles so anyway so makers is something i'm definitely working on right now my next go-to bottle for this fall is good old eagle rare now this is something that, you know, it's not something in the past that I've actually has been my go-to, but this particular bottle, I've continued to be impressed with it. It's extremely fruit forward, very, very nice red berry characteristics, really, really nice pour. And it has just really been a standout to me. And it's probably the first Eagle Rare bottle that I've had that I would say is kind of a go-to for me. And I do just tend to grab it and I'll grab a little pour and, and enjoy it. So Eagle Rare, it's just a, a, a fantastic bourbon from Buffalo Trace. It's aged for 10 years, 90 proof. There are not many other 10 year age stated bourbons that you can get for $35 or less in some cases. And in most places you can get them under 50 for sure. It's hard to beat this thing. It really, really is a nice bottle, particularly if you like the Buffalo Trace flavor profile. It's really, really solid. So definitely in my, uh, my one of my five go-tos right now. And after this bottle's empty, I'll probably open another one. That's one of the great things about Eagle Rares is it seems like every bottle I have is just slightly different, but noticeably different. It's not it's not drastic, but it's enough that I, I can actually tell a difference. So I'm always excited when I open an Eagle Rare because it's going to be a new experience. It's, you know, it's almost like a single barrel pick in a lot of ways. Definitely one of the reasons why it's in my five fall go-to bourbons. All right, my next go-to bourbon for fall is Four Roses Single Barrel. Now, if you look very closely, you'll notice that this one hasn't been opened. This is the one that I just got. It's the OESO from New York, and it was just in the last store haul video I did. I finished off the OBSK that I had from the Virginia ABC, or it was uh, from State Line Liquor up in, in Maryland. Knocked that one out, killed it, and then this is the next one up. And frankly, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to start drinking it immediately because... That flavor profile of that that single barrel uh, goodness of four roses, I'm I'm hooked. Very excited to get this one open. Anyway, that 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 four roses single barrel goodness is definitely one of my go-to bourbons right now. So this this bad boy is going to get opened, and uh, I might as well actually pop the cork and let it start airing out because I'll probably start drinking it this weekend sometime. Yeah. We're actually going to leave the cork off for the rest of filming and let it start airing out, and then I'll put it back on before I shut down. All right, my next bottle. It's become one of my go-to bottles, and it's been that way for a while now. 1792 Bottle and Bond. Uh, you know, there are other folks on YouTube who have had just rave things to say about this bottle. And, and, and to tell you the truth, it is fantastic. I used to, my favorite 1792, like that I could get on a regular basis, used to be the 1792 Foolproof. But now it's the Bottle and Bond, and, and to me it really is just this like amazing amazing bourbon f for an amazing price i mean it's a little hard to find these in some places it's really really good bottled and bond 100 proof it, it to me this is like the sweet spot the full proof is just a little bit too tannic a little too woody a too little too that this one is a really really accessible really well balanced across all the flavor knobs Love it, and, uh, I'm, and this is one of my go-tos right now. Very, very, very happy to continue to sip on this one. Now this last bottle, this fifth bottle of my go-to bourbons for fall, it's a special bottle, because I made it. <laughs> it's a poor man's pappy. Now it's not necessarily super readily available. You gotta have a Weller 107, which can be pretty hard to find, and you have to have a Weller 12, which is very hard to find. However, 
in spite of the difficulty of finding those bottles, I made this one and I've been working on it. And when you do find them, sometimes you have to pay a little bit more on secondary. This is something that to me is so good when you when you blend them together, 60-40. It, it's it really has kind of leapt to the front as one of the go-tos that when I want to sit down and drink for me, drink for fun. Uh, it's something that I drink. So I made this bottle maybe two, two and a half months ago, and then I let it sit for about a month with only just the teeniest little bit out. And then I went back to it, and I have just been going after this thing ever since. And I'm trying to slow down a little bit, but not too much, just because once this is done, I'm going to just replace it. I've got another, I've still got my Weller 12 with, uh, you know, just about half a bottle of that left. And I got another 107. So this is going to be refilled soon. So this is definitely one of my go-to bourbons right now the that I really, really enjoy. My my own little label. I glued on this this bottle, made it my own. It's, it's what I drink, and I really, really enjoy it. Well, these are my five go-to bourbons for this fall. It's not because they're particularly folly in any way. They're just what I like to drink right now. What do you like to drink right now? Leave a comment below and let us know what are your five go-to bourbons. And thank you so much for watching the video. If you ended up enjoying it, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thank you so much to the patrons of the channel for your continued support. And until next time, find a bottle you love.